Hello guys, I welcome to you to my new video and today's topic is really important. If you have failed your IELTS exam, unfortunately, or you haven't been able to get the scores that you need, the band that you want, so this video is for you. Now, if you think that you only have one option after failing the IELTS exam or not getting the required band, is that you have to take the exam again? Well, think again, because you're wrong. Okay, you have two options. You can either apply for a recheck or you can take the exam again. But which one should you do and which one is better? Well, I'll discuss all this in this my new video. So stay tuned. So let's jump in right. Well, the first stage I really want to talk about is this one. After failing the IELTS exam, you're anxious, you're depressed. And trust me, it's absolutely normal. Okay, and you should give yourself enough time to accept the situation. Do not try to bombard your mind, okay? Take a small break. You know why? Because that gives your mind the opportunity to start fresh later, at a later stage. Another very important thing is to avoid the blame game, okay? It's like blaming on the circumstances or the people or you're saying that the exam paper was really hard this time. It wasn't like it hasn't been like this ever before or the examiner was not fair in mocking you. Because remember, the examiners have a criteria, okay? There's a marking scheme that the examiners use and they have, they have been trained, okay? They are well-trained people and it's not going to help you, okay? If you... If you're just like, you know, blaming anything, like maybe yourself or somebody else or the examiners or the difficulty of the exam paper, it's not going to help, okay? It's better that you accept the situation, okay? Whatever has happened, for whatever reason it has happened, you accept the situation and then you can go beyond the stage and that helps you take charge of the situation, okay? So it's really important. To go past this first stage, okay, when you're feeling anxious and depressed, and give yourself enough time to get over it, okay? So that's the first stage if you haven't been able to get the required score. Now let's go to the next stage. Once you are confident again and you're over this first stage that I talked about before, then what you should do? Well, you should know your options. If you only think that the only thing you can do is to just take the exam, book the exam again, and just do it again, no, there are two options. Okay, the first option you have is to get your paper remarked. It's called EOR. Okay, that's the short form. It's called Inquiry on Results. And the second option you have is basically to set the exam again, take the exam again. Okay, now. Which one you choose really varies from person to person. And one has to take a lot of factors in account when deciding. And the factors are, for example, you have to think about your finances, how much money you have, because obviously you're gonna pay both of them. Like if you choose either one of them, you'll have to pay anyway. How much time you have, because that differs between these two options, okay? I will discuss this in a little bit more detail later. And the effort, of course. There is much more effort while then you have to set the exam again because you have to prepare everything again. So you have to start from scratch, basically. Okay, because there is nothing like, you know, that you can set just one part if you haven't done well in that. You have to set the entire exam again and take it all over again, okay? So it's really important to consider all these factors. So let's move to the next one now. Let's say you chose to remark your IELTS exam. So I'm gonna look into this option in a little bit more detail. As I already told, it's also called inquiry on results. Okay, so you are basically, basically applying for the EOR in the test center wherever you start your test, in your country or wherever it was. Well, the first thing you have to remember is the deadline, okay? When the day you get your IELTS results form in the post, or the day the date you actually start the exam, basically, okay, whatever date is on the form, in the test report form, and on the results, 
like you know from that date you have approximately four to six weeks in which you have to apply for a recheck okay and it's important not to miss the deadline okay because if you do then you can't apply for it so that is very important thing to remember well uh, the cost the cost of getting your IELTS exam paper remarked okay is obviously less than booking for a new exam okay now i can't give you an actual quote at the price because it really varies from country to country okay so for example in the uk it's around 60 pounds to get your paper remark but in different countries and in different currencies i'm not sure but you'll obviously have to check with the test center where you took the test and they will be able to guide you now I'm going to tell what are the positives and what are the negatives, okay? So the positive, I already told that, like, you know, if you're comparing these two things, that you have, these two options, then obviously the cost is less for if you get your paper remarked than if you were sitting the exam again, okay? Now time. Time is a crucial factor for most of us because we need this exam result for maybe for the university or for our job or for our immigration application. and you we might have a time frame in which we have to do it. So you have to remember that it takes a really long time, okay? And roughly, on average, it takes around two months, which is eight weeks. And this is like a negative point of this. So, so if you are thinking of getting your paper remarked, you have to remember this thing, okay? That it does take a lot of time. So it might be a better option to just take the test again if you have a deadline to meet, okay? Okay, now the next point. The chances of your mark being altered are slim. Yes, guys, this is something you should know. Okay. On average, very few people get their grade or grade their band altered. Okay. But you can't predict. Okay. This is just a general trend that has been seen. No one can really predict what will happen in any individual situation, okay? Because sometimes the band changes and in other cases it doesn't, okay? So there have been people who have applied for a remark and they got the band changed. And there have been people who applied many times and nothing happened. The band stayed the same and nobody can really predict, okay? It really depends on your luck and whoever is remarking your paper again, whoever examiner, okay? Whichever examiner is doing it, sorry. Also, you should also remember that the chance of your band being increased is more if you are looking for an increase in the band in the writing section or in the speaking section, okay? And why is that? It's because these two papers, these two sections of the IELTS exam are subjective. It differs from examiner to examiner, okay? So let's say somebody marked your paper earlier and he gave you a 6.5. Well, that's the favorite band that they give in the writing, okay? So most of the people, they'll give 6.5, okay? And many of us need seven, unfortunately. So let's say the first examiner gave you 6.5, and when you applied for a re remark, and somebody else remarked your paper, and they thought, wow, your writing is really good, or your speaking recording is really good, and they increase your mark. So it really differs from who Ever, whoever like you know is actually reading or like you know rechecking your paper but in listening and reading it's more difficult to get your band changed you know why because there are keys okay there is only one right and wrong answer okay so that's not going to change if you got it wrong the first time there are more chance well the chances are the same that you're going to be it's going to be wrong again as well because there is only one right or wrong answer but in Writing and speaking, it differs from person to person, okay? So there are more chances you have to take into account. That which section of the IELTS exam you are thinking of getting remarked. I also want to add, like, if you want to apply for a remark, you have to get in touch with your test center where you took the test, and they'll give you a form. You need to fill in the form. You need to send your original test report form with it, and you have to pay in the bank, okay? And all these details you can get from the test center, but these are the basic steps you need to follow when you get your paper remarked, okay? After not getting the band that you want, 
okay? So that was it for remarking your IELTS exam, okay? What's the second option? Well, you can choose not to get your paper remarked because it takes a long time and you're just not confident that your writing was good enough, let's say, or whatever you're getting remarked, okay? So, well, for this one, you have to prepare again. And obviously you have to pay for the exam again. And this time it's the same price and it's the full price, okay? I told you that if you get your paper remark, that's, that costs less, okay? Way less than actually writing the exam again. And the results are issued on the 13th day, as we all know, like how it normally happens. So it's just a new try, okay? And it's obviously quicker, okay? Waiting for 13 days for the results is better than waiting for two months for the recheck, especially when you have a deadline to meet. Maybe for the, you know, the application, university application, or, <laughs> excuse me, or for the immigration application. It really depends on your circumstances. And you have to take all this into account when you're making a choice between remarking your paper or setting the exam again. And the good point is that there are chances of you passing or higher, okay? And I'll tell you why. It's not that you're gonna bribe the examiner. <laughs> it's just that because you have attempted the exam once or maybe twice or twice before, you are familiar with the format of the exam, okay? And hopefully by now, you're aware of which section you're struggling with. Maybe it was a speaking section or it was the writing section, or whichever section, or reading, whatever it is, okay? So because you have done the test before, you are, you are in a better position to actually judge yourself and know for yourself where you are struggling. So when you sit the exam again, let your past failures be your guide, okay? That's very important. And what you should do is that you should tackle your problem areas, okay? Let's say you're struggling in speaking test, okay? So you should try to tackle that. You should try to improve that part when you set the exam again, okay? Because that's the only way you can improve. By, by tackling the areas that you are not very confident about or you're getting a low score in. So improve those areas, okay? If you do decide to set the exam again. And it's really important. So I'm going to discuss a few things. Like if you're writing the exam again because you didn't get your required band before, what you should do. I'm going to discuss some general points. Well, time management is a major factor. And it's one of the reasons that many people have to take the test again because they don't get the required mark. It's not because their English is not good and things like that. It's just because they didn't manage the time properly in the exam and they were they were unable to finish their exam paper in time. So that's why they had to do it again. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is very simple. Practice under exam conditions, okay? Do the entire paper from listening to writing, okay? All the four sections, okay? Under time condition, time yourself as if you were in an exam and how would it be, okay? So it's very important because this is one of the factors that many people fail. Okay, now writing and speaking are the two major areas where most people fail. Okay, now you must take the help that you need. Okay, if you need some professional help or somebody who has done the exam before and has quite a good mark and they know how to do it, get the help, okay? It's very important. You know why? Because writing and speaking, it's very difficult to assess your own thing. And why I say that? Because for the other two sections of the IELTS exam, that is the listening and the reading, when you are practicing, you have got the key. Okay? And you can obviously check the answers, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. But when it comes to speaking and writing, practice is the key. And practicing with somebody who, who has done well themselves in the exam or with a teacher who can guide you, who can tell you, because it's very difficult to assess your own thing. So you should get somebody else to do it for you. Practice. If you're struggling with speaking, let's say, then you should practice with somebody else who has got a better mark and who has done really well or a teacher. 
okay some professional help is needed in these two areas because that's the only way you can improve okay so guys this was all for today i hope that this video was helpful and if you're ever in a situation where you didn't get your mark where you didn't get the band that you required and you have to choose between remarking the paper or taking the exam again i hope i gave you an overview of what both of these things involve and which one you should choose and what things you should think about when you are setting the exam again or applying for a recheck okay so if you found this video helpful please like the video share it with more people whoever your friends if they're taking the ielts exam okay and please please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because i will be posting a lot of new videos okay for you guys and they they're going to re really going to help you okay so my last word don't give up be positive study hard and i'm sure you can do it as well okay and if you have any questions or you need any personalized help with your speaking or listening or reading or whatever it is you can always email me okay at ielts platform at ielts platform or one word ielts platform at gmail.com thank you so much for watching your video and best of luck once again take care bye bye